Hello everybody, welcome to this week's video. Today we're gonna to be looking at this GBM light. This is the uh, 650B Pro, and this is a professional budget video light for professional video users. GBM sent me this to review, so we're gonna review it in this video. And because we talk mostly about photography on this channel and a little bit about video, we're also gonna be looking at this light as a potential studio photography light, like a constant video light. Can you set this up as a photography light and shoot with an aperture of let's say F8 at a decent ISO and use this as a replacement for studio strobes. So that's something I'm curious to see, can, uh, can that be done? So uh, if you wanna watch this review video, we're gonna review this as a video light and a little bit of a photo light. So yeah, stick around. All right, one more thing before we get started, I just wanna mention GBM did send me this light for review along with this GBM lav mic and that diffuser over there. So I just wanna say that GVM did send me these things, but in no way does GVM get to influence this video. They don't get to watch it before I publish it on YouTube. This is an honest and genuine review. So hopefully you find that valuable. And if you do, I have a lot more genuine and honest reviews on this channel. So definitely subscribe, hit the uh, thumbs up down below and let's get started with the video. All right, so let's take a look at what GVM sent in their care package. First, we have the lights and all the cables and everything there. And then they sent this GVM light diffuser. So we're gonna take a look at that briefly. And then they sent these lavalier mics. So this is, uh, this is the audio you're listening to right now. I'm using these GVM mics to make this review video. And it's your standard kind of uh, modern mics where you have the uh, two transmitters and a receiver and a little box, the self charge and all that stuff with the cables. You've probably seen this setup many times, but uh, this is what I'm using for the audio for this video. And if you wanna see a full review on these mics, they'll be linked down below when they're ready. So uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at the diffuser and then we'll get right back to the light. All right, so this is the reflector. You can see it's got a, a double diffusion system and a grid, which is pretty cool. It's about two feet across, bones mount on the back. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you wanna see the full review video, like I said, will be linked below. So now let's take a look at the star of the show, the 650B. All right, so let's start this review by looking at what comes in the box. First thing you'll notice is the GVM logo is printed upside down, not sure why, but uh, there we go. So you get the light, the controller, and you get your cables. And these are really nice quality cables, might I add. And uh, it's pretty easy to set up. And one thing that is pretty cool is if you're not, uh, familiar with these these things, each cable has its own unique head, so it's almost impossible, what well, is impossible, to screw up the cable connection, so you can't put the wrong cable in the wrong port. So that's uh, awesome if you're new to this lighting. Now, I've been using this light for about a month now, just to get to know it, get used to it, and understand what it is, so I can give you a proper review. And one of the cool things that this comes with is a little clamp that attaches to the controller and you can attach the controller to your C-stand or whatever, any kind of bar or anything like that, which is really awesome. So that's a nice little feature, really appreciate that. All right, so let's take a look at the controller here and uh, I got a little handle on the top, vent on top here. And on the bottom, this is where the, uh, the cables get plugged into and you'll notice there's a uh, DMX connection too, if uh, that's something you're into. But uh, yeah, you can't screw up the connections because everything has its spot. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now for the star of the show. Here is uh, here's the light. And uh, we'll take a look at that in greater detail in a second. And last but not least, we have the reflector, which is your standard kind of uh, hyper reflector. It really uh, amplifies the power of the light which is uh, pretty cool. So we're gonna test that out as well with a little photo or video shoot. All right, so let's talk about build quality. This thing is built like a tank. If I dropped it down the stairs, I would be afraid I would break. Like this thing is solid, solid and it's heavy. It feels very substantial in the hands. This whole kit packed up weighs 35.7 pounds, according to Amazon. I was trying to find the weights for these things, couldn't really find it. My guess is this is somewhere, it's over 10 pounds, close to 20, but I wouldn't say exactly 20, maybe 18 pounds. This is, this is pretty heavy. This is pretty heavy. I'm guessing 18 pounds. If I can find the information, I'll put it down below, but uh, that's my guess. You got a solid aluminum build on the top, the bottom, the front feels like it's aluminum as well, this handle. This yoke, like everything is solid. It's just built, it's built right, you know? So thank you GVM for that. That is absolutely fantastic. This is a nice solid, heavy build. You can see that there's like little heat fins here. Everything's kind of built to uh, let heat out 
if you look at the top, you can see the fins from the, uh, the cooling system and underneath you can definitely see the fan under there. It's a pretty big fan. And uh, good news is it's pretty quiet, but we'll look at that a little later in the video. And on the front, you definitely want to remove this plastic piece before you turn on the light because you will melt this on your light and you're going to have a lot of fun taking it off. So yeah, super impressed with the build quality of this light. Absolutely fantastic. I have no complaints whatsoever at this point about the, uh, the build quality here. And when it comes to the controller, this thing is built pretty solid as well. We've got a nice aluminum housing here. The top and the bottom are plastic. You've got your V-mount batteries. You've got your dovetail mount here. You got a nice handle on top. The whole thing is pretty solid. Even if you shake it, nothing really happens. You don't hear a lot of stuff shaking around. The buttons are metal and you can, uh, if you're into clicks, there you go. And you got a nice, you can feel a little resistance or little um, notches in there when you turn the, the knobs, which is nice. These white buttons here are rubber. So they're pretty silent when you push them, which is probably a good thing on set when you're shooting video. And uh, yeah, overall, Build quality on these things, absolutely awesome. All right, so there's one flaw I found in the Bowens mount here on the front of this light, and uh, hopefully it's something that GVM can address because I've scratched up the side of my light already. And uh, the thing is like, this is a GVM light diffuser and you can see there's like a little pin here on the side, which you can screw on tight to prevent the light from turning or you can loosen it to allow the light to rotate. So we're going to screw it down so it's in the tightest position. And when you do mount the light to here, you mount the light, you can see it's, it hits the pin here on these, uh, this light modifier and it scratches the light. So um, yeah, I think the issue, so you can see here it's scratched. I'll get a close up of that. But the issue here is that the Bowens mount is recessed into the light a little too much. For future lights, I would suggest GVM to bring this mount forward maybe an inch or so, so you don't run into these kinds of issues and damage the light trying to attach modifiers. Features. All right, so let's talk about the features of this light, and let's start with the most important feature, and that is the brightness. This light goes up to 650 watts of brightness, which is enough to blow up my hand completely, and I don't even want to look towards the light, but this light gets super bright. And that's where your money is going when you're investing in this GVM 650 Pro B B Pro. Anyway, so yeah, this light gets super bright. And if you want to buy this light, you got to ask yourself, do you need this brightness? Is this something that's going to help you with your video or your photography or whatever you're using this light for? Is it going to help? Because this is a lot of brightness. And you know what? I mean, you could even use it at, you know, here we are at 40 or 36 percent and it's still still plenty bright, <laughs> even at its low setting. So, yeah. So first feature, brightness, and that's extremely valuable if that's something you need. And situations where brightness helps is, let's say if you're shooting outdoors and you have natural sunlight and you have to compete with the natural sunlight, this will help you compete against that. Or if you have natural sunlight coming in through a window and your light source doesn't have enough light to brighten up the models or subject's face, you need something with a little more light. Or sometimes you have two subjects standing in front of a bright window and you need a lot of light on them to compensate so the window isn't blown out. So those are the situations where this comes in super handy or if you're in like a big production space and you just need to throw a lot of light over a lot of distance, this is great for that as well. But if let's say you're a solo creator and you're in a basement studio and there aren't any windows and the only lights in your basement are the lights you put in there, you probably could use a 200 watt light and you'll be fine. This is more of a, a light that's designed for competing against sunlight or throwing light over long distances. All right, another feature, and I know this isn't a crazy big feature because a lot of lights have this, is that the controller is detachable. So you have a clamp that fits on the arm or on your uh, stand, and then uh, the controller is attachable and detachable. And in my opinion, I think that's absolutely fantastic. It's not hanging by a thread or some kind of nylon rope or anything like that. It just clamps on and it's sturdy and it's awesome. And uh, yeah, definitely thumbs up for that. Okay, so another really cool feature here is that you have V-mount battery mounts on either side of this controller. And yes, you can power this light using V-mount batteries. You can mount one battery on each side. And how long those batteries will last, I don't know. I guess it depends on how bright your light is set to and all that kind of stuff. But I don't own any V-mount batteries, so I can't test it is what I'm saying. But it is a really cool feature if you're shooting, let's say, in a cabin in the woods <laughs> with no electricity, you know, or out in the forest or desert or wherever. If you're off the grid somewhere and you want to shoot some video content, 
it's really cool that you can mount V-mount batteries to this and still get power. All right, now we're gonna go over some of the features here on the controller. This is a bi-color LED light. So if we switch over here to CCT, we click here. The top button here controls the tint of the light and the bottom controls the Kelvin temperature. So if you wanna go with a warm tone or a cool tone, that's up to you. You can do as you wish. And if we go to source, click here, this just gives you the power of the light. So we can go down to 100%, back down to whatever percent we want. And then if we click this button, we can select all these different presets here for light temperature. So studio lamps, sodium lamps, halogen, and all that kind of stuff. So that's all right there. Go back into the mode. And then now we have our effects. And personally, I think this is kind of gimmicky, but if you're looking for this kind of stuff, you've got a bunch of different effects here. I'll put them uh, on the screen right now so you can go and take a look. And let's get out of here. All right, so those are the three modes. Now, if you hit the menu button, you get a different set of settings. So the first is DMX. I've never used DMX, so don't quote me on this, but I believe it's a way to connect all your lights together if you have multiple lights and you can control them from one source. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. Next setting you have here is the dim curve. Push the button to access it. I keep mine on linear because it's just a smooth transition in and out, but obviously you can change it if you like. Back. Next up, we have Wi-Fi settings. So click here. And by default, the Wi-Fi settings were off on my light. So make sure you go and turn them on. And to turn them on, you just select it and then push this, this wheel in and it turns on. So if you're downloading the app to use the app, which is awesome, we're gonna talk about that next. Make sure you turn on your Bluetooth settings so you have access to that. Okay, and back. Next, we have studio mode. And studio mode is really interesting. So if studio mode, let's see, we'll click here. We have it on. So if studio mode is on, the light will remember the settings that were set when you turn the light off and back on again. And that's super handy if you have your lights rigged up to some kind of rig overhead and you don't want to like reach for it and fuss with it and change everything all the time. So it'll remember your settings when you turn it off and back on. And obviously when studio mode is off, it forgets everything and goes back to default when you turn the light back on again. So that's pretty handy. All right, so next up we have frequency settings. So frequency settings is the frequency at which the light pulsates. Now, obviously the human eye can't see it, but right now the light is pulsating. Boom, 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 boom. And when you're shooting at 24p or 50p or whatever, well, I guess 50p you might see it, but usually at 24 frames a second, you're not gonna notice anything. But if you're shooting at high frame rates, 120 frames a second, 240 frames a second, you might have to adjust this frequency so that you don't see the light pulsating in your slow-mo shots. So that's just something to keep in mind and back. Next up, we have fan settings and you have smart, you have high and you have silent. I have mine on high right now. Let's set it to smart. And honestly, we'll, we'll do a little fan noise test later, but this thing is pretty quiet. So we're set to smart now and back. Language, obviously you can choose English or Chinese. All right, so anyway, English is the language. And then here you have your settings. If you wanna mess around with any of the settings, you can reset it back to factory, tells you a controller version, lamp version, and so on and so forth. And the last button here is the cool button. And apparently this is supposed to help cool down the device if it's running hot. According to the instruction manual, cool key, start a large air volume cooling until the temperature decreases to a touchable temperature. So I guess, yeah, if you, this is on for a long time and you wanna cool it down fast, you hit the cool button. But yeah, that's pretty much this whole thing in a nutshell. All right, another really cool thing with this light is that you have app control. So you can actually access all the features I just showed you. Plus there's a few more features. You can actually save presets with the app and then you can just hit the button and jump to those presets. So if you have a preset for lightning or a preset for blue tungsten or whatever the case may be, you have the presets, you can save them on your phone app. Me personally, I cannot connect to the app and or connect to the light through the app. And that's probably on me, I'm using an older phone, plus I have some security stuff on the phone, which is probably preventing me from connecting. And the one thing I will say I like about this app is the fact that you don't have to sign in with an email and set up a password. Like, hey, come on guys, we are so sick and tired of having to set up emails and passwords and emails and passwords and for everything you do. So it's so nice to see an app that you don't have to do that with. So that, that's pretty cool. Thank you GVM for that. Now, I know this app does work because, because I've watched review videos from other YouTubers talking about the app. And it just, for me, it's probably because of me that I can't access the app. So 
that's all I can say about the app. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the quality of the light. And I'm not talking build quality, I mean like the light coming out of the light. And for my needs, for my use cases, it is absolutely amazing. It's perfect. I have no complaints with it whatsoever. It is just, it's powerful. It's bright. It gets the job done for photography usage and for videography usage. Obviously, it's a video light first, but you can use it for photography because it's super bright. Now, I'm 70% photographer, 30% videographer. For my video needs, it's like YouTube stuff, and then I'm shooting interviews or talking head things or... Uh, educational tutorials and that kind of stuff and for me this light is absolutely perfect no complaints it's now my key light but I have to be careful because it's so much brighter than all my other lights if I have this at full power then the effects of the other lights get completely diminished or washed out because this thing is so bright so maybe I need to pick up some more of those um, but anyway yeah if you are the type of person who needs absolute 100% perfect color accuracy I watched a great YouTube review video about this light. I'm gonna link it down below. And uh, the person in the, I forgot his name, but the person in the video has all the equipment to test the, uh, the color of the light and every, uh, the output and all that stuff. And this light tends to shift towards magenta according to his research and his review. So if you wanna check out that video, I'll link it down below. All right, so it is photo shoot time. Being mostly a photographer, I want to be able to use this light in a studio situation. So I'm gonna test it out right now. And um, the sun has gone down, it's dark outside. The only light in the studio right now is the GVM 650B. And it is bright, it is only at 2% power right now. And granted, we're shooting video, so we're at uh, aperture of 5.6 and 50th of a second. So once we shoot photo, we're gonna go to 1 25th of a second, so it's gonna be a little bit darker but there's a lot more room for that light. I can't be looking at it, it's too bright even at 2%. Uh, there's a lot of room for that light to go up. Now, I'm testing it with just the standard reflector right now, and then I'll take some shots with this uh, diffuser as well, and uh, it'll be a little softer right now. You can see there's a harsh shadow on me because the light is pretty harsh. We'll get a softer light with that. I'm assuming I'm gonna have to bring uh, the light closer to me when I put this diffuser on because this really cuts the amount of light coming from the, the light itself. And just for reference, the light is about 11 feet away from me. I gotta stop looking at it. Uh, it's about 11 feet away, aimed at my face. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take some photos. And my objective here with the photos is to at least get to F8. If I can keep the ISO on the camera relatively low and get to F8, that's a good studio shooting aperture. So that's what I'm looking for. If I can shoot F8, ISO 200, 400, something like that, this light will be perfect for studio photo shoots with a constant light. So I'm going to go take some shots and then we'll pop onto the computer. We'll take a look at the shots and I'll tell you what, what my settings were. All right. All right. Photo shoot over. Let's take a look at some photos. And you know what? Remember earlier when I said that this light might be overkill for a lot of people who shoot in dark situations, like if you're in a basement studio or you have a studio where the window is blocked out or you're not competing with natural light or any bright lights if you're shooting indoors, this light is probably too powerful for you. Case in point right here, I'm at ISO 800, so the background is exposed as well as myself. If I go to ISO 200 or 100, I'll be exposed and the background will be dark. So ISO 800 is a good ISO for this kind of situation. We're at F4 and the light is only at 4.8% power. And we're using that diffuser on the light, which really cuts the amount of light coming out of the light. So it's not even 4.8, it's probably like one point something percent power if you factor in the diffuser. So case in point here is that you don't need such a powerful light if you're shooting in a dark situation like this. So if you're a solo content creator and you're just filming in a small space and there's no window light to compete with, I would probably recommend GVM send me this little card. So I'll take a screenshot of this and put it up on the screen. But they have an SD200B for $239 and an SD300B for $389. So if you're shooting a lot in the dark, like you see right now, I would recommend those two lights over this light. This light is a bit, a bit overkill, unless you're you know shooting outside, which I do, or you're shooting with windows with natural light coming through, which I do. So in my case, the extra power is wanted and needed. But if you're shooting in the dark like this, then uh, go for one of the... Uh, the SD200 or SD300. All right, with that said, let's uh, take a look at some of these shots. All right, so now let's take a look at some of these photos. First shot was taken with the reflector cone on the front of the light. And here we are at 48% power and the light is 11 feet away from me. 
and the camera settings were 1 25th of a second, F8, ISO 400. So I was able to achieve my F8 goal. And you can see here that the colors are a little bit off. Like it doesn't, that doesn't look like a natural skin tone. It looks maybe a little greenish, pinkish, kind of weirdish. But uh, maybe that's something that can be adjusted in post. I'm not going to judge this light on the, the colors right now. The exposure looks good. The colors can all be adjusted later with photography. So that looks pretty good. And now we're going to go out of here and we are going to look at the diffuser. And looking at the diffuser, again, the exposure is really good. Now, exposure is the same, 1 25th of a second, F8, ISO 400. I didn't want to change it. But in order to get this exposure, I had to move the light closer to me. So this light now is 5 feet away from me instead of 11 feet. And the power is at 100%. So you can see how the diffuser just eats up a lot of that light's power and spreads it out and gives it a nice soft look. So the exposure here looks good. The shadows are falling off. Everything looks nice and soft. This is a two foot uh, diffuser or two foot wide. So it gives a nice light for headshots or upper body shots. And uh, there we go. I would say that is definitely a win. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna test fan noise. We have uh, the computer off, everything off. So this place is completely silent. When it starts up, it does a little and then comes back down. So let's set this to 100% brightness. We are now at 100% brightness. Get out of here. And we're going to go to menu. And where was it? Where's the fan settings? There we go. Set. So right now we're set to smart, which I assume means that the light will you know, minimize the usage of the fans as much as possible. And here I am a foot away from the light. And now you'll never be a foot away from a light in a real use situation. You'll be about at least six, seven feet away. So I'm just going to step away. Now I'm going to bring the mic right to the light. I guess the fans at the back are on the bottom. So that's pretty quiet in smart mode. Now if we go over to silent mode and set that, why did the light dim? There's light coming from it, but uh, let's see if I can set this up to full power in silent mode. It is full power in silent mode. All right, so I guess it, uh, it limits how much light it can uh, output in silent mode. Okay, so let's get out of here, back to menu. Now we're going to go to high. So here we are a foot away from the light. I can hear it. I assume you can hear too. Now I'm going to step about five, six feet away. So it's definitely audible to me anyway in, uh, in high mode. Now we're going to switch back to smart. And now it's super quiet again. All right, and that's fan noise. All right, so let's talk about something really important here. These are like the hidden costs or the, the thing you have to really understand with this light, and that's stands. Like if you buy this light, you're gonna have to invest money in proper stands. Don't put this light on this, like this is a cheapy stand. You know, you got the plastic clip that, you know, it slides up and down. It costs, you know, 20, 30 bucks on Amazon. Don't ever put a 30 pound light on a cheapy stand. Trust me, it's not worth it. What you want is you want, like here I'm using, um, a stainless steel Manfrotto stand. And even this stand, I don't really like having this light on the stand. I would prefer something a lot more solid like the C stand. Here I have a C stand on wheels. And these are metal wheels, by the way. I do have one of these Manfrotto lights with plastic wheels. <laughs> I put the light on there. I could just feel the plastic kind of starting to sag. I was like, no, 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 no. We're taking it off of there. But the only reason I have this light on this Manfrotto stand is for the video height wise. It's at my height. Up here, it would be a little too high for compositions and things. So C-stand is what I recommend for this light or any kind of heavy duty stand designed to take heavy lights. I would totally recommend putting that light on there. This C-stand, by the way, newer C-stand with the metal wheels, you can buy that on Amazon. And I find this perfect for studio use. It's just heavy lights just roll nice and easily. So that's a good thing. And the other thing you have to keep in mind too is that when you put a light modifier on the front of the light, 
the gravity pushing down on the light is a little, it's a little heavier. So a 30 pound light might feel might like a 33 or 34 pound light. So just something to keep in mind, especially if you want to use a boom arm like this. Like I usually use my lights on a boom arm because it allows me to just like, I can have the arm over a table, over a desk, over a chair, and it just gives me like this overhead hanging light. And I usually use a, a VL300 by Godox on here and I'm, that's what's lighting the scene right now. But this boom arm will bend with the weight of that light and this light is way heavier. So I'm not even gonna try putting this light on this boom arm. And I'm usually using a larger diffuser like this. And when you put a large diffuser like this on the front of the light, the, the pressure pushing down on it, the gravity, it's just, it just physics. I mean, this doesn't weigh anything. It's like a little tent, but when it's extended out past the, I guess the fulcrum of the, of the stand, it just has a little more weight pushing down on it. So you just gotta be careful when you're using big light modifiers, the light is going to feel even heavier than it already is. So I would definitely not even consider using this boom arm with this light. In fact, if you wanna put this light on some kind of extension or boom arm, you would have to get, um, what's it called? A mega boom or something? I'm gonna put it down below. I'll put a, a little picture here and it'll be, the name of it will be down there, but it's a big industrial kind of crane almost. And it's designed to carry lights with this heavy load on a long arm. So I would definitely not put this on anything else but a heavy duty stand. Now here's the thing, after being in this industry for 18 years, I've heard a lot of stories. I've heard a lot of crazy stories and here's what you don't want to happen. Don't put this light on a cheapy stand like this and try and save money and try and save weight. I know you're doing a location shoot. You don't wanna carry a heavy C stand with you. So you're gonna bring this stand and then guess what happens? This stand starts to fail, the light falls down, boom. It hits your talent in the face. Maybe your talent's an actor, actress, some kind of sports uh, athlete or something, or maybe you're doing a product shoot, you have some expensive products, or you have a, a Ferrari that you're shooting and the light falls on the product. It's not worth it at that point because you will be sued. You know what I mean? Like if, if you, let's say this, this light falls on an actor's face, smashes their nose, they can't do their acting or whatever, they lose money, they lose out on gigs, they sue you for their lost income, right? It's, it's crazy. So hopefully you have insurance. I mean, probably you do if you're buying a light that's this expensive, you have a business and you're doing things properly, but just something to keep in mind. Like if things get damaged on set, you're in trouble, right? So you gotta cover your butt, make sure you do your due diligence, use a proper stand with a heavy light. And that's my advice to you on stands. All right, so let's go over a few pros and cons with this light and kind of figure out who this light is for by understanding those. So right now I'm using the GVM light. It's about, I don't know, let's say four feet away from me right now with that small two foot reflector. And I've got some blue LED lights as accent lights around here, but the GVM light is the key light. So first pro is the price. And I know this is gonna sound crazy because this is a $1,000 light, but if you look at value for money, this thing is absolutely incredible. You're getting a lot of power for $1,000 and all the competition out there, like the professional lights in this power range, they're gonna cost you $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. So you're gonna pay a lot more. So with this light, you get a lot of bang for your buck in terms of power. And I feel like the one con here, and we'll talk about this in the cons, but I'll mention it now, whatever, is the fact that the the color temperature isn't exactly precise. So that's the trade-off. You're getting a lot of power color temperature isn't super precise. So you have to evaluate if that's important to you or not. I mean, if you're shooting commercial product photography and everything has to be pinpoint, perfect color accuracy, then maybe this light isn't for you. But if you're shooting music videos, if you're out there shooting interviews with people, if you're just shooting like headshots, casual type stuff, maybe like online courses, things like that, I think this light is absolutely genius for that kind of application. Now the one area where this shines, and this is gonna be helpful for people who shoot in these kinds of situations, is in situations where you're battling the sun, right? If, 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 I, if you have your subject matter in front of a window and your light isn't powerful enough, what happens is you'll expose for your subject's face, but the window's gonna be blown out. So you won't see the blue sky, you won't see the trees, you won't see the stuff out there, it's just gonna be blown out all like white, right? So if you can increase the power on your subject's face, that way the light coming in from the window is equal to the light hitting your subject's face. Now you've got balanced lighting and that'll give you a better exposure, more pleasing exposure without any blowouts. 
And that's where this thing really shines. So if you're shooting outdoors or you're shooting in situations where you have natural sunlight coming in through a window, or if you're doing commercial shoots where you're on set and you just need a lot of light everywhere. Like let's say you're doing a podcast and you want to do like a video of the podcast, but you want the room to look bright and airy and look like a real professional like studio setup like you would see on ESPN or something like that. You'd probably get maybe two or three of these lights, bounce them around, reflectors and stuff like that. And it'll just fill the whole room with light and every angle will be looking good. You'll have no dark shadows or dark spots anywhere. So, so those are the people that I think would really benefit from using this light. All right, and the third pro with this light is the travel case. I am so grateful that it comes with a travel case because lugging around that light and then that controller and then the cables and different cases and stuff like that would be such a pain. So that travel case is definitely a huge bonus. All right, number four, and I know I had issues with the app and I couldn't connect to it and that's on me, that's my fault. But I did watch some videos with people going through the app and the features that the app has and the things you can do with the app and the way you can connect with it. And it, to me, I'm going to put the app as a pro, although I haven't used it. I've watched some videos about what you can do with it. And it looks like a huge bonus that you can go into that app and you can save different light settings and then just, just turn them on whenever you want and the light will like jump to that setting. So I think that's a really handy feature to have presets in the app for your light. So that's fantastic. Now take that, that pro with a little grain of salt because obviously I haven't actually used it yet. All right, number five, the fans. They're super quiet. Even when you have it set to high mode, you won't even hear the fans from five feet away. So that's awesome. And you put it in smart mode and it's super quiet. You don't hear anything. And that to me is absolutely awesome. I've dealt with LED lights with noisy fans before and it is so frustrating. So GVM, good on you for the quiet fans. All right, and the final pro for this light is the Bowens mount. Now, obviously there seems to be an issue with the Bowens mount on this light. It's too recessed into the light. If it comes out, if it protrudes a little bit more, I think it'll be perfect. So that's just like a design flaw that hopefully GVM addresses in the future. But with that on the side, the fact that it has a Bowens mount is absolutely amazing. And if you don't know what a Bowens mount is, Bowens is a lighting company and they make accessories for their lights and all these third parties, third party companies like GVM also make accessories that fit the Bowens mount. So you can find anything. You want beauty dishes, you want large reflectors, parabolic umbrellas, whatever the case may be, you can find it for Bowens mount. So it's a very versatile mount and super happy to have it on this light. All right, so the first and obvious con with this light is the weight, you know, 30 pounds for a light system. It's pretty heavy, but you know what? I'm honestly, I'm happy to trade the weight for the power. That's fine with me, but it is going to fall on the con side because it's just something you have to be aware of. Make sure you have the right stands. Make sure your stands are capable of carrying the weight. If you're going to use a boom, make sure the boom is the proper boom. So it just, there's a lot of things that go along with this light. It's a very pro level light with a pro level weight, and you're going to need pro level gear to support it if you're going to be using it on set. So that's just something to consider. And con number two is the color accuracy. I mean, after looking at these photos here, I can see that the skin tones aren't very pleasing. Something just looks a little bit off. Now, considering that this light is half the price of the professional stuff or a third of the price of the professional stuff, I'm still getting the power and I can get the exposure and that's awesome. And if I have to tweak the colors later, then I can tweak the colors later. And it all comes down to what you shoot as well. Like if you're shooting music videos and you're getting creative and you're using gels and colors and filters, nobody's going to know the difference, right? But if you're doing like commercial reproduction type stuff, product photography, product um, videos and things like that, then this light might create a bit of an issue for you. But again, it depends on the scenario and how you use the light and what kind of deliverables you're giving to the client. And the third con, obviously we touched on this before, and that is that the Bowens mount is just too recessed into the light and the light's getting scratched with GVM's own uh, softbox here. So it's, you know, that's something that's a bit of an oversight that needs to be addressed. Now, maybe different GV or maybe different Bowens mounts mount differently and you won't have that little piece sticking out. Now, that little screw thing, you can just unscrew it completely and put a shallower screw in there and you're fine. So. There's a workaround for it, there's a solution to it, but it's just something to keep in mind. So if you buy this light and you buy the GVM diffuser or any other diffuser, make sure it doesn't have, you know, pieces of metal sticking out that could scratch your light. All right, and that's it. 
All right, and that brings us to the end of the video. So hopefully you enjoyed that. GVM, thank you for sending me the light, the mic, and the diffuser. I'm definitely gonna put the light and the mic to use. If you wanna see a full review of the mics, definitely check the description below when that video is ready. There'll be a link down below. There'll also be a review of the light diffuser. So if you wanna see that again, link down below. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the light, if there's anything you want me to test, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and test it out and I'll give you an answer about the light. Definitely think it's uh, it's worth the money if this is something you need, if you need the power and this kind of like the super light. Right now, if you're curious, we're at 4.6 and the light is literally arm's reach away and I have a VND on the camera to cut down some of the power. If I take off the VND, it's gonna get super bright and right, there we go, boom. So there's with that without the VND, so there's with it. Always, always shoot with a VND when you're shooting videos. It just makes a huge difference. All right, so with that being said, this video is over. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to my Instagram account and to this channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.